CTV News with Jackie Scantlebury. Good afternoon. The only survivor of a murder-suicide near Claire's home continues to make amazing progress. The family's pastor, Rob Dale, tells CTP News that Shana Conway is now breathing on her own. She can speak and even move her left leg. The 21-year-old is also out of the ICU. Dale says that she spoke to Shayna on Christmas Day, and while she's tired, she's determined to get better. On December 1st, Derek Jensen gunned down Tabitha Steppel, Mitch McLean, Tanner Craswell, and Shayna before turning the gun on himself. Shayna admits to her pastor that there are many moments where it's hard to think about the incident. A Rocky View County councillor has died after a ski accident at Nakiska. Rick Butler crashed into a tree at the ski hill west of Calgary Boxing Day. The 55-year-old was taken from the hill and rushed to hospital in critical condition. He died a short while later. Butler became a councillor in October of 2010 and was elected Deputy Reeve. Well, it appears that someone wasn't in the Christmas spirit Monday. Three windows were smashed at a West Lethbridge church on Boxing Day. It happened at the Mormon Church on Jerry Potts Boulevard West. Police say it happened in the early morning hours and they are continuing to investigate. Well, those wild winds may have died down a bit for now, but Environment Canada still has a wind warning in place for Lethbridge and much of southern Alberta. At this point, the warning covers Crowsness Pass, Pincher Creek, Waterton Lakes National Park, Cardston, Fort McLeod, McGrath, Lethbridge, Tabor, and Milk River. Then late this afternoon, the warning was extended to cover Claire's Home, Brooks, Vulcan, Medicine Hat, Bow Island, Suffield, Cypress Hills, Provincial Park, and Foremost. The winds are expected to redevelop Wednesday morning with gusts around 100 kilometers per hour and will last until noon. In Lethbridge, people aren't welcoming the wind instead of snow this holiday season. I would definitely replace wind with snow. I like the snow. I like to bogging and making snowmen and all that fun stuff. I don't know if I like it, because at least snow, it looks pretty and it's cold. Wind, it just screws everything up and it's still cold. <laughs> so Last year was really, really cold and uh, it was kind of uh, a little too much. But this year, you know what? I don't mind this. I don't mind it at all. It can leave any time. A little bit's okay, but this has gone on too long. I'll take the snow. No wind. Steve Rothfels joins us now. Steve, snow isn't in the forecast in the near future, but showers could be later this week. Later in the week, but until then, as you pointed out earlier, uh, Jackie, there is wind and lots of it, sort of on and off, but gusts up to 100 kilometers per hour starting tomorrow morning. We've got them to about 70 now. It'll be dry and temperatures are going to continue way above average. We'll show you as they get a little cooler towards the end of the week, but until then, look for these very, very, very warm temperatures, but it'll be with the wind. Jackie. Thanks, Steve. Well, Sears Canada plans to close over 100 stores in both Canada and the U.S. Up to 120 Sears and Kmart stores will be closing. Although it's not clear which locations will be shutting their doors, Sears official blamed disappointing holiday sales for the decision. Analysts have long been critical of the retailers falling sales, adding the outlook for Sears is bleak because the company continues to lose ground to its rivals. But some people are shopping this Christmas or this Boxing Week sales and they're taking advantage to buy some big new presents for themselves. Hundreds braid the early morning lineups and busy stores to get deals on electronics. Alicia Fieldberg reports. It's a really awesome deal. Dedicated shoppers looking for a deal on electronics gather outside Best Buy well before dawn. We got around like 12.30. Camped out, a little cold, and made some new friends, and had a good time. The lineup offers many rewards to those who give up sleep to stand out in the cold. If you're interested in this, we've got limited stocks, so I've got tickets here. You the anticipation builds as the group counts down to six in the morning. When the doors open and hundreds of people pack the store. The lineup is super busy, just going, 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 gone. Staff put lots of preparation into making their busiest day of the year a great experience for everyone. In order to have uh, a successful day, we, do, we start hiring um, for Boxing Day in uh, November. They draw lines on the floor and set up barriers to guide traffic. We keep it pretty calm and, you know, there's one way around, you got to follow it so that way you don't get trampled. The store also offers contests for employees to help keep spirits high. My favorite day of the year. It's just, it goes by fast and it's a lot of fun. You know, a lot of people moving in here. 
The shopping frenzy can be stressful. There's a game plan. Someone's looking for something while I stand in the line and wait for them. But many Boxing Week shoppers save hundreds of dollars and say it's all worth it in the end. I thought I'd stop by and give TV since there are crazy good deals. Alicia Fieldberg, CTV News, Lethbridge. Best Buy Canada says it tracks more than 4 million visits to its website between December 24th and 27th as people prepare for the sales. Well, a Coaldale teen's Christmas decorations will come in handy for those Boxing Week sales. 14-year-old Sarah Greening decorated her family Christmas tree with Canadian Tire money for her dad. She spent months collecting more than 100 Canadian Tire dollars. The Greening family decorates their tree in honour of one family member each year. Sarah planned this year's tree as a surprise for her father, who she calls a Canadian Tire fanatic. Five o'clock in the morning, walked out of his room, just taking our dog out, and he's just like, what the heck is all on our Christmas tree? That's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Sarah says she planned the surprise to give back to her dad for always being there for her. Well, now that most presents are unwrapped, Christmas cleanup begins, but not all of it can be recycled. Staff at BFI Canada are sifting through hundreds of rounds and pounds of recycled material from Christmas, but have to pick out the wrapping paper. Most Christmas packaging combines paper with metal or plastic, and it cannot be recycled. Staff say they're pleased that people are becoming more conscious of recycling all the types of materials each year. Let's take your old electronics to the landfill and they have an e-cycling space there for you to recycle your old electronics. BFI waste system staff say they normally process between 50 and 75 percent of waste this time of year. That's an increase over what they usually do. And for those of you starting to think about what to do with your tree after the holidays, the City of Lethbridge has an environmentally friendly option. The tree recycling program will begin on January 14th. Undecorated trees placed by your regular garbage collection will be carted away by the scouts. And since the program began 16 years ago, it has helped divert roughly 75,000 trees from the landfill. Public skating will be on hold at One City Arena on Thursday. The ice plant at Civic Arena will be undergoing repairs, forcing the rink to close operations for the day. Senior skate, which normally occurs in the afternoon, has been cancelled. The curling club schedule will not be affected, though. The city says they expect the arena to resume normal activity on Friday. Well, if you don't have New Year's Eve plans yet, a local program offers the chance to meet new people and help bring in the New Year safely. Operation Red Notes needs 40 more volunteers for New Year's Eve. The program helps keep impaired drivers off the roads by offering people a safe ride home after a night of drinking. Operation Red Nose has provided more than 1,200 rides already this year. Organizers are looking for drivers and dispatchers for the night. Anyone interested in volunteering can call 403-329-2681 and leave a message. Operation Operation Red Nose raises thousands of dollars for the UofL pronghorns each year. Well, it took vision and plenty of hard work, but some Nanton residents have created a unique showcase to display the work of local artists and artisans. The office of a former grain elevator has been transformed into a fine art gallery. We have more in tonight's report from Farm.TV. Wooden grain elevators once dotted the horizon across the prairies. Today, there are not very many of them left. This one in Nanton, Alberta, has been preserved. Its former office turned into a fine art gallery. Cunio Wilson is a local artist and owner of the Against the Grain Art Gallery. It was the idea of the board members of the Canadian Grain Elevator Discovery Center, which um, run a museum type of operation at the Orange Elevator next door. And they steward the site, the entire site, and they um, have a mandate to try and make their operation self-sustaining. So they were reaching out to the community and looking for different ways to um, bring more income in and maybe have some products for sale in their elevator. The gallery opened on August 3rd, 2011, and has attracted visitors from across North America and beyond. Just worked every day, all day, into transforming a really, really dingy, previously slated for demolition, uh, grain elevator office house into a fine art gallery. The gallery has become a showplace for local artists. Ranching and farming life is reflected in many of the pieces on display. I've had so much support 
an outpouring of support uh, from the local community, local artists, even ones that uh, don't show here. They've all come in and visited and, you know, given me their best wishes. And, and people come in to see what their friends and neighbors are up to. Farm TV is brought to you by DA Building Systems. And to the financial front where Canadian markets were closed today, but American were open. Coming up after the break, how a common supplement may be able to turn back a woman's biological clock.